Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. All right. I'm going to read uh, 1 Corinthians 10, um, verse 13. And it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Thank God for the strength that he gives us to overcome all things. This time we are going to have a song by Sister Brittany Ladd. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, his whole sing like never before. Oh, my soul, worship his whole rich in love and slow to anger. Your name is great, and your heart is kind. All your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. She is holy thing. Sing like never before, oh my soul, for she is holy. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, for she is holy. Sing like never before, oh Worship is holy name. God, we worship your holy name. We worship your holy name. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. Thank you so much, Brittany. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Thank God. Beautiful song. This is a good time to go into our testimony portion of the night. So if you have a testimony, um, a scripture on your heart, a song on your heart, you can come at this time and get that. All right. There are no testimonies or any extra scriptures or songs. We will go ahead and turn it over to our speaker this evening, Pastor Bobby Ladd. Praise the Lord, Saints. I hope you all don't mind me teaching with a cap on tonight. I got me a late workout today and my head is still wet. So I'd rather be safe then you know uh, um perfectly appropriate i know it's not normally teach with a hat on but i i'd rather not get a cold if i can help it so y'all bear with me tonight um, so we're gonna look at uh psalm 23 and 1 uh, again, verse 23 psalm 23 beginning verse 1 a brief lesson tonight um, uh, the next time i do want to tell you i'm, I'm working on a message on purpose purpose um the next time i speak on a sunday um, um we want i want to talk about purpose um and i think it's from the lord i think it's a good message and um uh, I, i'm saying it because two things 
um, don't want you to miss it and pray for me. Uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a very meaty message, I believe, and it's it's about purpose, 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 purpose. So um, um, we praying for us. We we want to kick that in, bring the new year in with that kind of too. Um, our theme for the new year, stepping it up, and y'all have been doing it. We've all been doing it, and uh, you know, and 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 really, our sub theme. You know, I said we had a sub theme. Our sub theme is I ain't standing this mess another minute. <laughs> and that's that's gonna be our sub theme. I ain't standing this mess another minute. Whether it's being late, whether it's whether it's stumbling over the same stuff, whether it's um, uh, not being able to check my words, whether it's being late, whether it's you know throwing uh, getting angry too quick, whether it's you know whether it's watching too much, whether it's too much lust, whether it's too much envy, whether it's too much whatever. Uh, we're just not going to stay in this mess another minute, whether it's getting into hatred, whether it's getting into bitterness, whether it's whether the, the, the place where the devil had made me fall, this year I'm stepping it up. And I ain't standing in this mess another minute, whether it's sins of attitude, sins of the tongue, sins of the mind, overt sins. I'm not standing in this mess another minute. I'm stepping it up. So that's going to be our stuff thing. I ain't standing in this mess another minute. So, um, so, so, the, so we've been doing well. Uh, tonight, and was it was it this comment that I saw come up in the chat? Let me check this, y'all. Okay, let me, let me check the chat. I saw something pop up here. I don't want to miss anything. Um, wow, wow, we got some confirmation on uh on on teaching on purpose. Wow, thank God, <clears throat> Amen. We got one of the saints was asking about purpose. Wow, this morning, thank God. God is good. God is good. All right, so uh, so let's stay tuned, Saints. I think the Lord's doing something really good with that particular message. I usually don't know what I'm going to speak about until uh, I'm up there, but this one he's kind of laying on me to, to work on. So we'll be speaking on that, God willing. Okay, so um, uh, this psalm is a familiar psalm, and sometimes you say, well, what can we learn from this? You know, uh, stick around. <laughs> stick around. Uh, it's all the word of God is alive and new. And this, you know, uh, I love what Pastor Dale says. I read it again for the first time. Uh, so many pastors. And, and uh, I'll ask you to help me participate with your thoughts as we go through six verses. Um, with your input and help, we should be able to get right through this and move on. So six verses. The Lord is my shepherd. Talk to me. What does it mean? What's significant about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Personal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it See? means that he's our provider in our guide. Provider. Mm -hmm. Amen. And caretaker, provider just and everything that we need. Mm -hmm. What a shepherd is to the pasture. Amen. Everything. All right. Write this one down with your notes. This ain't no ordinary shepherd. <laughs> this ain't no ordinary goat keeper. This ain't no ordinary herdsman. The Lord is my shepherd. The emphasis is on the Lord. When it's capitalized in, in the Old Testament, um, that means it's calling God by his name. He revealed to Moses, Yahweh. It's unique. That's the best way to understand God's name to be Yahweh, his personal name in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He revealed himself through Jesus. When you break Jesus' name down in the original language, Jesus comes from Yahshua. Yah being a short name David used for God. Yah from Yahweh. Shua means salvation. Yahshua became Yeshua, became Jesus in English. So when you see Lord capitalized, it's called God by his personal name. So the message here is this ain't an ordinary shepherd keeping me. <laughs> Look out, wolves. This ain't an ordinary shepherd. I was watching a uh, reading comic strip once, and some football players were putting on their uniforms. And y'all have seen uh the uh mercury the god anybody familiar with greek mythology mercury is the fastest god y'all seen that he has wings on his feet anybody familiar with that oh yeah yeah hermes okay or mercury okay. roman god or greek yeah so he, he's supposed to be so fast he's like the flash you know and i was reading a cartoon when i was a kid and uh the football players were getting ready to put their cleats on and one of them looked at the uh, looked at the other one the new kid and he had wings on his feet and he says, okay, I don't think this is no ordinary running back. 
<laughs> and so so the fact that the fact that that God made the heavens and the earth and that Jesus Christ got it from the dead this ain't an ordinary shepherd the Lord is my shepherd he, David wouldn't have to say anymore the rest of this is automatic because the Lord is your shepherd it's over the, the wolves don't have a chance the Lord is my shepherd then he says now he says because of that I shall not lack and I understand the word want there is lack yeah, we're gonna we're gonna want things, but we're gonna lack for nothing. Do you get the difference? I want really, really. Well, I guess I <laughs> y'all saying y'all. If I say what I want, y'all might y'all y'all so sweet. Y'all might go do it. I, I won't say what I want, but there's some things I want, but there's nothing I lack. Give God a hand, praise. Give God a hand, praise. There are some things we want. But if the Lord is your shepherd, then nothing you lack. <laughs> oh, you ought to praise him. Come off mute and give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. Yes, indeed. There's some things I want. There's nothing I lack. I shall not lack is a proper rendition of that word. Verse 2. Give me a reader. Hillel, read it for me. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me mm -hmm. beside the still waters. Now, he makes me lie down. Talk to me. Talk to me. He makes he me lie down. He causes me to bed. rest. He causes me to rest. He causes me to rest. Yeah. yeah. See, you don't know when you had enough sometimes. Sometimes the Lord just calls you to rest. You've had kids that they, they didn't know the nap was going to be good for them and fought it. Did you have to make them lie? I'll talk to me, ladies. Did you have to make them lie down? Amen. And it was good for them. They didn't know why they felt so good. They didn't know why they grew. When you when you sleep, when you grow, when you sleep, you grow. You made them lie down. And not only that, they they were probably on a Simmons beauty rest and they didn't even realize it. They had a surter there that you, you had for them. <laughs> God, God, God's God makes the sheep lie down in green pastures, not just anywhere. God will make you rest, but it'll be it'll be a nice place. Sometimes Lord has to make you lie down. He's a good dad. He's a good daddy. He's a good father. He know you need rest. Sometimes he just make you lie down. That's kind of shepherd. He ain't an ordinary shepherd. See, he knows the beginning from the end. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He knows the ending from the beginning. He knows everything you want, everything you need, everything you desire. He knows what's best. This ain't no ordinary shepherd. That's the subject. Now, this ain't no ordinary shepherd. That's my subject. This ain't no ordinary shepherd. The Lord, Yahweh, is my shepherd. Our best understanding, we don't know what the name of God means, but our best understanding is, I am that I am. Also extended to, I don't know if we took a liberty or not, but we've extended to, I will be what I will be. <laughs> <laughs> Preachers preach that, but it ain't in, it ain't in the original language. It, it's been extended through preaching, <laughs> but his name means I am that I am. <laughs> Somebody said I am that. You need that I am that. Amen. You need the way I am the way. Mm -hmm. I am the truth. You need life. I am the life. Mary Martha cried about Lazarus. He he did. He, we know he'll be raised again. The resurrection. Jesus said, "I am the resurrection mm -hmm. and the life." <laughs> <laughs> oh. I am that I am. He told Moses, "I am that I am." Tell him, "I am sent you." <laughs> but this ain't no ordinary shepherd. Yeah. See, the one that's keeping you ain't no ordinary shepherd. I spoke last uh, Sunday, and and I mentioned a verse. I repeated here: "Except the Lord build the city." You labor in vain, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watch it in vain. And, 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 and therefore, the, uh, the contrapositive of that is, if the Lord keeps the city, it's kept. If the Lord builds a house, it's built. Mm -hmm. Peace of God with pastor's knowledge. Shall, shall keep your heart to mind through Christ Jesus. Scripture Sherman Tyler read. So if the lock on the door to my mind, my peace of mind is Christ Jesus, I'm kept. <laughs> if the lock is Jesus, I'm kept. Ain't nobody breaking that lock. The Lord is my shepherd. I'm kept. I'm okay. This ain't no ordinary shepherd. I'm kept. I'm good. I'm good. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me where? He'll show me what to do right, how to do right. I don't know how to do right. I'm a sheep. I stumble. I fail. I get offended. If somebody say, man, you get offended? Hmm. People bother you, get offended. But because of his name, because I bear the Lord's name, 
I'm going to lead me. I'm going to let him lead me the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I want to act the fool, but because I'm a believer, y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> I want to bless you out, but because I bear the name of Jesus, because I call on that great name, because I'm identified by that name, I'm going to walk in the path. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep myself in check. I got something on me called the yoke of Christianity. I've taken on the yoke. Take my yoke upon you. Learn to me. That means I don't go where I want to go. I don't do what I want. I got a yoke upon me. What? Jesus' yoke. Take my yoke upon me and learn upon you. Learn of me. My yoke is easy. You put that yoke on the oxen, that oxen is submitting to you as a master. You lead him and guide him. He fights the yoke. He wants to be wild and free. Take my yoke upon you. Limit yourself. Put yourself in my hands. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. You'll find rest for your souls. For his name's sake, I'm going to do what's right. I'm, I need to park it right there. It ain't about you getting even. It ain't about you letting them know who, who they fooled with this time. It's about the name you carry. You carry in Jesus' name. And for his name's sake, because I'm a believer and I'm called... I'm going to handle this different than I would have handled the old way. I ain't the old. The old man is crucified with Christ. I'm a new man in Christ Jesus. For his name's sake, I'm going to walk in the path of righteousness. I'm stepping it up this year. Satan got me a few times last year, but I'm stepping it up. I'm going to take the path. Of, I'm going to take the high road this time. Amen. Isn't that all right? Take the high road this time. I'm going to do it God's way this time. My father might be pleased. Comments on verse three. He restores my soul, leads the path of righteous for his name's sake. Any other comments? Look at that. We halfway done. Six verses. We had verse three. Give me verse four. I want somebody older than 40 to read verse four. You're under 40. You might not understand all, all of this. <laughs> I need somebody older than, older than 40 to read this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no mm. evil, for thou mm. art with me, thy rod mm. and thy staff, they comfort me. You go through some things, and when you're young, everything is big. When you're 13 and they put you out of the circle and they won't talk to you and they gossip, you think you're really going through, you're ready to fall out. Being 16 and the first boy, a girl breaks your heart. You think you're going through a pain that nobody's ever dealt with. You're 21 and, 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 and you can't pay your bills and, 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 and the apartment, they threaten to throw you out. You think nobody's dealing with this. Then you turn 25, then you turn 30, then you turn 35, then you turn 40, and you've been through some stuff. You've been at the brink a few times. You've been at the point where you just wanted to quit Seemed like everybody turned. You couldn't trust nobody. Family, friends. Seemed like nobody. Seemed like even the Lord wasn't listening to you. Got dark. The shadow of death. Seemed like it was just all around you. Death. Mm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Sometimes you can feel death. You can see the shadow. Seemed like it's just right there. You almost died. Sometimes you reach a point where you wonder whether you want to live. Shadow of death looming over you. But you reach a point in your faith after you've been through a few things. I will not fear, for thou art with me. Even, even the valley, God is with me. When I was at my worst, God, I, I thought he wasn't there. I couldn't feel him, but he was there all the time. In the valley, God was with me. And of the shadow of death, God was with me. I will not fear for thou art with me. And not only that, you got a rod and a staff to comfort me. What's the rod for? And what's the staff for? That staff has a hook on it. And I can bring that, uh, bring that sheep in. And that rod, that's the long part of the staff. You seen that shepherd staff with the hook on it? I got one at the church. That long part, the handle part, that's for the wolf. <laughs> and that hook is for me. God can pull me in with that stick. Hey, 
And God can take that same stick and make a rod out of it and strike the wolf with it. One tool, hook me in and beat the wolf down. That comforts me, knowing that God won't let me go too far. Ain't that a blessing? God will keep you, your feet from, unto him, now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, I say you be glory. Pray that forever and ever, amen. God's able to keep you from falling, hook you, bring you back into the fold. And when the devil comes, God knows how to flip that stick around and still the hook, it's the long part, that staff. Beat the devil off of you. This ain't no ordinary shepherd. He'll twirl that thing like a baton, hook you in, twirl it around so quick, whap the devil, devil won't even know what happened. Twirl it back around and, 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 and it's right back to being a rod. <laughs> Staff rod, twirl it around, boom. That comforts me, knowing God got, got, got enough power to hook me in and enough power to beat the devil back. The wolves don't stand a chance. This ain't an ordinary shepherd. Give me verse five. I want a young reader here, verse five. Young reader, 16 and under. 16 and under, verse five. Thou preparest a table or under. for me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah. Thou anointest my uh -huh. head with oil, my cup runneth over. See, young, you can get this. Your haters get to see the Lord bless you. <laughs> this is what this verse is saying. The haters, the Lord delight in allowing you when you when when you walking and pleasing him and serving him and his sheep and trying to be. God delights in letting you see your haters see the Lord bless you. <laughs> God is good with that. He won't just bless you in a corner. He'll bless you in front of your haters. They got to peep through the window and watch you eat. <laughs> They're not at the table. They peep through the window. You ever had something good happen and the folks that hate, hate on you found out about it? I told you a lady fired me for witnessing to her about Jesus. She was my employee, I witnessed to her about Jesus. She became the boss. She fired me and let me know with the notion, I'm firing you and Jesus. I'm firing both of y'all. I got the power now. I left out of there, the Lord doubled my salary. Y'all know this testimony. Next time I saw her, I was sitting down in the subway. She in a business suit, rushing back to get back to work. I'm sitting there, she said, well, what are you doing? I said, I'm at work. I'm, I'm the Southwest Regional Manager for Texas Instruments. I, I, I run uh, Florida, Texas, uh, all the way up to North Carolina. I travel where I want to go. I'm just sitting here having lunch with my wife because I work from home now. She couldn't stand it. She was blown away. I'm making double the money and I'm sitting in a subway and she's rushing back and I'm, I'm sitting in some sweat. She's rushing back to work and I'm making twice the money she made. Lord prepared a table in the presence of my enemies. That was me. Eat at a table. God let my hater see it. She didn't have to come in there, but God wanted me to be blessed by the fact that the hater had to see me being blessed. God will prepare a table. You ain't got to take vengeance in your hands. God will fix it so those folks that, 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 that after you will see you being blessed. And then some, I had some other haters try to get me fired from a job. And the company told them they had to go and they reached out to me for help. God will prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Sit down and eat and let your enemies peep through the window and watch because you his beloved, you his sheep. Thou anointest my head with oil. God will fix you up. My cup runs over. You ever been in a place in God where your blessing just overflowed? Seemed like you just couldn't, couldn't even pocket all the money God was sending you. Some, some of y'all said, hey, my testimony yet, Pastor. <laughs> oh, I've been there. You got so much money, you don't know what to do with it. Your blessings is coming so fast, you can't even spend them all. Your cup will run over. That's the kind of God we serve. This ain't an ordinary shepherd. He delights in overflow. He delights in excesses. The wealth of the wicked are laid up for the righteous. God delights in blessing you. You just got to trust him. You can't be clinging to the to, to pennies. <laughs> you trust God and God will give you the overflow. Verse six, last verse. And that's my wife reading that one. Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life. And I like the way I, you read that, Evan. Just hold up. Hold up, Evan. I like the way you read that. Read that with that emphasis again. Notice where she places the emphasis. Go ahead, Evangelist. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Time out. And Time out. I, even when I'm going through, even when I'm going through a bad situation, goodness and mercy still follow me. God's goodness and God's mercy is sustained. Even in a bad situation, God's goodness and his mercy is still there. Even through a trial, God's goodness and mercy is still there. The, the Bible says, my Bible says, surely, when Jesus, when Jesus wanted to make a point, he would say, verily, verily, I say unto you. And I'm going to preach on that. I've got, I'm giving away all my little plans, but there's a few times Jesus said, verily, verily. And when, you, when Jesus said that, you got to tune in. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Because this is Jesus talking. It's already true regardless. But when he says, verily, verily, Got to pay attention. But the writer here, don't, don't, you ministers, don't y'all steal my subject now. Don't y'all steal that. <laughs> I'm going to preach barely, barely. <laughs> but when the Bible says, surely, ain't you curious about what Jesus said after he said, barely, barely, I say unto you? Aren't you curious? Stay tuned. Stay tuned. When the Bible says, surely, that means no doubt, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David wasn't just speaking about himself. This goes for all the Lord's sheep. That's why it's recorded in scripture. Shall follow me all the days of my life. Where, where, where I go, what trails behind me? Goodness and mercy. Saints, I'm asking a question. Where I go, what trails behind me? Goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. God's goodness and God's mercy. Everywhere I go, God's goodness and God's mercy. You ever had somebody follow you? Your little brother, little sister to annoy you? Anybody ever had that happen? <laughs> if so, tell tell me if so. Absolutely. Tell me the last time it happened. One, one of you, one of you children, tell me. You ever had your little brother and sister follow you everywhere you go? If so, tell me. Mike is open. Tell me. I can tell you, Pastor. My grandkids, they follow. They follow me to the bathroom. They follow me to this room, <laughs> to that room. They just follow me. They just want to <laughs> see me. <laughs> Every time you look up, there they are, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and if we receive it, every time we look around, there's God's goodness over there in one corner, God's mercy in another, just waiting mm -hmm. on you. Amen. Waiting to cover you. God's goodness got me following you because you're his child. You're his beloved. Almost like two angels, one name goodness, one name mercy. Every, way you, every time you look up, God's goodness there. Every time, God's mercy is there. I've seen God's goodness. I've seen his mercy. I saw it when I was traveling across the highway, my car out of control. I saw God's mercy. <laughs> I saw God's goodness. I shouldn't have been speeding, but I saw God's mercy. I slammed into a tree, but didn't get a scratch. Told my car, but didn't get a scratch. I saw God's goodness and mercy following me. Yeah. As yeah. I sped, I saw his goodness and mercy following me mm. on that strange thick road. Even though I was flying down that road, I saw God's goodness and mercy keeping up with me. As I skid right in front of that 18 wheel and he missed me, I saw God's goodness and mercy. And I saw these trees stop me from going down a hill and flipping over and over again. I saw God's goodness and I saw God's mercy. And when I stepped out the car and it was total and I didn't have a scratch. Mm. I saw God's goodness and I saw God. It followed me across the highway mm -hmm. between the truck into mm. the trees. And when I got at two o'clock in the morning walking in that field, not knowing what I was going to run to, and who, who I was going to run to, I saw God's goodness and mercy leading me. Hold on. I had to walk a mile or two down that highway. Didn't, didn't run into no bobcats, didn't run into no wolves, didn't run into no dogs, didn't run into nobody trying to do me hurt, harm, or danger. Two o'clock in the morning, unarmed. Mm. I saw yeah. God's goodness, his mercy, trudging right behind me through that mud, back to the highway, up the highway to the first exit ramp, two o'clock in the morning. God's goodness and God's mercy kept me. Yes, yes. Amen. Shall follow me all the days of my life. And because of that, because of that, this verse says I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay with God. 
I'm gonna dwell in the house of the Lord. It don't mean I'm gonna stay in the church building. It means I'm staying with God. I ain't going no. I would. I, who wouldn't serve a God like this? That can tell death, be still. That can tell sickness, get out of that body. That can tell the enemy, back up. This is my child. That can tell wolves, bobcats, robbers, don't come near this. This is my child coming up the highway. You stay back. That can hold that eighteen wheel up and keep that truck steady and put a tree where the truck would have gone over here. We put a tree there to stop it. And tell hurt, don't put a scratch on him. Amen. And that will give him a friend that'll come pick him up at two o'clock in the morning, glad to do it. And take him where he needs to go. So they can both give God the praise and the glory and the honor together. But the devil meant for evil. Hmm. God meant for good. This ain't no ordinary yeah. shepherd. Yes. The Lord. The Lord, Yahweh, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack for nothing. Back in the hands of our uh, pastors, uh, Pastor Don, Pastor Daryl, you have comments and go back to IMC. God bless you. Can I ask a quick question? Yes, sir. So verses two, three, and five are past tense. Verse six is future tense and the other one is a current action but verse one is like is that something that we can say for ourselves or is this something that only applies to to david and this is an affirmation by david so is this an affirmation that any one can make. I mean, this affirmation you think is more solid in the sense that it's in the Bible, so you so God is certainly blessed it, but I can't sure. make an affirmation that surely Pastor Bobby is gonna give me a hundred and thousand dollars when the church is over. That's mm -hmm. that's, that's not, not being blessed by God. So how, how are we to interpret that based on those two questions? Okay. Okay, put put it back up there. It's a, it's a quick and easy and straightforward answer. Put it, put it back. Excellent question, though. Put it back up there. Put it back up there. Okay. So David is saying all of this follows because the Lord is his shepherd. Right? Everything that follows is, is a result of the Lord being your shepherd. Right? This is what happens when the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord well, is my I guess, shepherd. I guess two, two, three, and five are past tense. So it indicate they've already happened. Not necessarily mm -hmm. past but, tense. But, 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 but intense is... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pastor Darrell. Right. No, no. I, I was thinking it's not. And someone put it in the chat there it, it, that it's uh, more continual because it's ETH make it yeah. and right. like we're right. doing it now like perfect right. intense. He's doing it now, and we'll continue to do it. Um, right. So right. Not, yeah, he may have done it. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't. He's doing it right now, and we'll continue to do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's for all the days of his life when you come down to the end. And 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 thank you, Pastor Darrell, because that actually that is actually the answer. It is, it is continuation. It's, and, and, and keep in mind, tenses and God, uh, it, it gets to be an interesting thing. Uh, but but I'm not going to teach on God and tenses. But yeah, this is this all uh, all the benefits, all the benefits that have, that have flow in verses uh, from from B, from one B down to six are because the Lord is, is his shepherd. And what did Jesus say in John 10? Who, who is our shepherd? John 10. I am the what? Good shepherd. Good shepherd. Uh-huh. So let me tell you, every benefit that David got because the Lord was his shepherd, Yahweh, guess what? Jesus is God. And he said, I lay down my life for the sheep. So every benefit David got from God being his shepherd, Jesus being God, we get because Jesus is our shepherd. He says, I'm the good shepherd. All that came before me were thieves and robbers. So yes, these benefits totally apply to us. Absolutely. Every one of them applies to us. Absolutely. Amen. Good question. Amen. And, and God intends that that's that's a whole series on of Bible classes. <laughs> God intends is is God speaks about the future like it's the past, because to him it has. It's nothing gonna stop him. <laughs> so, so, but that's a whole, that's a whole another. Uh, you know, I'll start preaching. I talk about God and tenses. God ain't, God ain't attended nobody's English class. <laughs> he used tenses. He's, he, he speaks about the future like it's the past. 
<laughs> so, um, but Amen, very good question. So, um, if there are no more comments. Any other comments? Let's go ahead, baby. Pastor, uh, comment on uh, verse two. Mm -hmm. Is he gonna take out of his water? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's not. Can you hear me? We hear you. Yes, sir. Oh, um, yeah. it said that a sheep won't drink from fast moving or rough waters. Right. That they right. would, they would right. die of thirst before they would drink from yeah. a, I guess, a rough Dream. body of water. And yeah. then in the now, I've verse, heard that. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Huh? Go ahead. I'm no, no, go ahead. Okay, yeah. So I've heard that, uh, and, and because I haven't had any experience with it, obviously I haven't any, haven't had any empirical yeah. um, knowledge of that. But uh, but that's what I've heard. That still was important because sheep. Uh, even my pastor, the one that in Tallahassee passed, he would teach on this, and he would say that sheep will not drink from running water. Now, again, I don't, you know, I'm not, yeah. you know, have experience, but that's what I heard. I've, I've heard that. I've heard I've that heard. same thing, and that's why still waters are important. And I also wanted to look at verse uh, five, where it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, if I'm mm -hmm. sitting at the table and I'm surrounded by my enemies, I'm not, I'm, I'm trying to focus on my food, but I'm trying to wash my back too. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I, well, if he prepared the table, he got your back. Right, right. Yeah. Well, see, and, and that's the beauty of it, because the, the, the way I like to think of it is they peeping through the window. Cause, cause, <laughs> because really, if God is standing there and he prepared the table, ain't no devil crazy right. enough. <laughs> you know, you know, so, so the, the best, the, that's why I use analogy, they peeping through the window, you know, <laughs> but, but no, because God prepared the table and you sitting down you ain't got a, nothing to worry about. Yeah. Because, because this ain't an ordinary shepherd. I yes. might, I might put in, this ain't an ordinary cook either. <laughs> so, yeah, I think about the same. Yeah. Yeah. You covered. Yeah. What, what you think about is correct. Yeah. Ordinarily you have to worry. If you prepare a table in front of your enemies, you have to worry. But, but when God says, sit right here, baby, uh-uh, ain't nobody bothering you. Sit right here and eat. You, you 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 can take all the fretting away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 the kitten in, inside the car at that point. The hawk is out there, but he he all he can do is look through the window. Yeah, you know, it, 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 the that. video we saw the hawk and the kitten, all that all that guy had to do was put down some cat food on that dashboard and tell the cat eat right there while that hawk out there slapping at the window. I mean, that would have been a perfect picture of perfect. God preparing the table in the presence of your enemies. That, that man should put some milk up there for that cat to just, that kid to just look up at that hawk and just lap that milk. <laughs> and, and there's a component to it that drives the enemy crazy, but that's a whole nother other thing. You keep, kind of keep coals of fire upon his head. But but yeah, yeah, that's exactly the case. God oh, prepares a table for the enemy so you can be at peace and, and, and they can be bothered. <laughs> he thought for sure he had that kitten. <laughs> he did. He absolutely did. Telling that. Telling that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem with that uh that text. I know when I was in um like I used to be a waiter uh when I was in college and, and uh, there was a table seven was the best table in Jamil's and table twenty one was the uh there were two tables that were for two people. One was table number seven, one was table number twenty one. But always two became unless they like they didn't give a good tip, they didn't get table seven. But table seven was a nice table, so. But it was in a nice in the in the corner. Table twenty one also sit too, but it was next to the kitchen and too much traffic. And so, and I always said, where you sit is very important. I just knew that. And and I was just reading this. I remember I said, I don't want to be right there. I don't want to be around all my enemies. I want to be in a nice, nice, safe, cozy spot. So when God prepares a table, I'm thinking, why does He give me table number seven? It's the perfect <laughs> situation. I used to always say, I want that table, and uh, and not where you know. Around the enemies, They're like someone said, I'm looking over my shoulder. I can't really enjoy my food because they're all around me. And thinking, like, it's a reason why he did it, but I never really thought about why. I mean, we said tonight is beautiful. I think about, you know, God's going to you know, bless us in front of our haters. They're going to see it. And uh, I mean, who knows what they say when they see it? They may glorify God for all we know, you know, w whatever the case may be, but we don't have any reason to worry about it. And, but I've always thought, actually, I prefer to have it someplace you know, where I can just enjoy it in peace and, and we can enjoy it in peace, even though we ride around. Uh, I guess wherever God's out to bless us, that's just where we are. And, and he's got it totally. Yeah. So we don't have any real reason to worry about they're still here <laughs> and they're still around. And the situation still looks, uh, you know, kind of um, uh, dark and gloomy, but that's where we, that's where we eat. And that's where God will have us. So I, 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 that's a nice light on that. Um, like I always thought about that for years. 
And, uh, and thank you, Pastor Darrell. I want to start something new this year, too. Normally, when we teach on Thursdays, we have our, just our pastors with comments. I want to start having our ministers go first and then our pastors to see mm -hmm. if they have comments. And so I don't know who, I don't know if Minister Harper's here. I heard Evangelist Tyler's here. Um, I don't know if we have Minister Bonnie or not, but uh, before we make the final uh, close out here, do we not ministers have anything to say? And that includes Minister Ray June, who's our youth minister. Uh, I don't know if Ray June is on here. I, I want to start hearing from Minister CJ. Is CJ on here? He's a young minister. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm starting to put y'all to work. Robin, you're a minister. Do you have anything to say? Is, she on, is Robin on? Yes, yeah, she's on. Do you have any comments on yes, this? I'm here. I, I don't. Okay, great. CJ on. All right. And uh, so... Uh, he's in another room, but I'd like to take his second, okay. if you don't mind. Okay. <laughs> Can I just okay. take his place while he's not in the room? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, sweetheart. I just want to go back to verse one, and you all touched on everything. You know, we to me, we just brushed past the Lord is... To me, the Lord is that means he's ever present. <laughs> Amen. Everywhere. He is. All the time. Not was. Look, not was, not will be. <laughs> the Lord is. Wow. So that's why he can take us through the next steps. Mm -hmm. He restores our soul. He causes us to lie down in peace. He leads us beside the still waters. He prepares a table before him. All because the Lord is. Surely his goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. All because the mm -hmm. Lord is. And to just prove that it continues, when we go to Psalm 27, what does it say? The Lord is my what? light yeah. and my salvation. <laughs> uh, all yeah. because the all Lord right. is. Go ahead, Ben. Okay. Another minute. That's all I got. All right. If, if Andrew, you taking notes here, this? You watching right. this? Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. God is okay. my all and my all. He's everything. He's omnipotent. He's God all by himself. I praise him for being the greatest shepherd there is. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vincent. And my wife asked if she could take a, a Robin spot. My answer is, of course, dear. <laughs> <laughs> so I like... Um verse two and it says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures we talk about he sometimes he has to cause us to rest i like that because sometimes as the word says in 40 in psalm 46 10 it says be still and know that i'm god sometimes he has to make like i said we had, he has to make us sit down and rest right. he needs to do something while you being still mm. we have to mm. be still sometimes so he can mm. me, I don't want to say manipulate, but right. yeah. work while you right. sleeping, while you right. slumbering. Right. There's something he needs to do in you, make mm -hmm. you reevaluate the situation, mm -hmm. the circumstances, going to bring those, bring the word back to your mind. Right. You know, what he has said, his promises that he has already made. Mm -hmm. And in the night season, mm -hmm. you know, during that time, mm -hmm. that's when he gives you a song. Right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, Amen. You know, it's great for talking. Uh, we'll, we'll finish, we'll go to Pastor John and lastly, Pastor Darrell, back, back to Bridget. This is so good. As she was talking, I thought about two things. I thought about when they get ready to operate you on you surgically, they put you to sleep. They they can't work with you being awake and asking questions and <laughs> and what wait, what's that? What you taking out? They can't deal with that. You can't deal with the pain of it. You can't deal with the shock of something being removed. And they can't they so they put you to sleep and work on you and then tell you, okay, you're fixed now. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because they you, you get in the way and God has to make your rest, as she's yeah. saying, so so he can fix you. I thought about too when when you put a car in the shop, you can't come in there with your car I'm late for work, just your mechanics run along beside you fixing your car while you're driving it. They, they put it in park, they jack it up, that car can't move, then they get in there and do what they want to do, then you get to run it again. We try to sometimes the Lord has to just slow us down, make us rest to fix us. But that's that's really good. Um all right, any other congregation, it's so good tonight. It's just really good. And and this is something we've been, and like like Pastor Daryl always says, we're reading it again for the first time. We're getting all this. The word of God is just rich. It's alive. So no more comments. We've gone through the ministers. Ray June, minister, our youth minister's passing on here, said, you know, no comment tonight on. Appreciate you, Ray June. With that, we're going to go to Pastor John to see if he has any comments. Then Pastor Daryl, after which we back in the hands of the very capable Bridget Haley. Hey man, um, I just feel more confident. <laughs> more bricks have been laid tonight. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. I mean, this is 
I mean, if, if you ain't confident after hearing <laughs> that, I, <laughs> I don't know what's going to make you confident because, I mean, I, I just feel comforted, confident that God is my protector. He's my provider. He's my guide. Um, he's, uh, he has my best interest at heart. Uh, there are things that I don't understand that he's protecting me from. He, I mean, he is just, we, we pray over our food, you know, purify this meal. Sometimes we forget, but God, God has gone before us. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just such a sweet relationship uh, it's being described. So I, I was just blessed, blessed by tonight's discourse, Pastor Daryl. Hey man, I was, I was blessed tonight. Beautiful lesson again. And appreciate all the comments. And I'm just thinking when the uh, uh, first lady Grace was talking about making a lot down, I just thought about, the third, the, the, when I had COVID the third time, it wasn't as bad as the first two times, but when I had the third time, and I went and got my uh, computer out of the storage, and I just started, I pulled that book out that I've been writing, the book is on that machine, I started writing this book again, I had a whole week to just write, and I was just writing away, and I was feeling good, and then when I was clear to go back to work, that I haven't written one page since that day, and I thought, it doesn't, shouldn't have to take that. But it took it to get me excited again, and uh, but now you just 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 get after it again without having to make me go lie down to do it. And so uh, I just I just, I just love the way God you know shepherds us and and uh, and, and takes care of us and and He knows what's best for us and to get us refocused and and uh, on the right track, pointing the right direction, and um, does what's best for us all the time. So that's all my comments. Beautiful lesson tonight. And uh, I do want to do, do one more thing. And um, thank you, Pastor Daryl. Pastor John was saying that uh, a few more bricks have been laid. It brought to my mind this, this song. And I really want to just leave, before we go back to bridge, I just want to leave this song with you. Uh, I ain't trying to sing it, sing it, but I, it's just on my mind based on what he said. It says, how firm a foundation you saints of the Lord is laid for his faith. Our faith is excellent word. It goes kind of like this. Maybe maybe Hillel, the hymn, the, the hymnist, the, the hymnist will sing it for us one day for real. I just want to sing a couple of verses of it, then go back to Bridget. It says, How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, he is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for prayer used to Jesus has fled. Fear not, I am with you, oh be not dismayed. For I am your God and will still give you aid. I'll strengthen you, help you, and cause you to stand upheld by my right, just omnipotent hand. When through the deep waters I call you to go, the rivers of sorrow shall not overflow. For I will be with you, your troubles to bless, to sanctify you amidst your deepest distress. The flame shall not hurt you. I only design if thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. A firmer foundation. Amen. Beautiful. Thank you, God. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, maybe the hymn, maybe man. some of the young people you hear this and some of y'all can sing that right. But uh, Amen. Pastor Amen. Honor, that brought me mind. How firm he saying to the Lord is laid for your faith. It's an excellent word. What more mm -hmm. can he say? And to mm -hmm. you, he has said. To you who for to Jesus for refuge has fled. I'll strengthen and keep you and cause you to stand upheld by my mighty omnipotent hand. The flame shall not hurt thee. I only design it thy dross to consume, not go to refine. For not I'm with thee, be not dismayed. For I am your God. And this for you this hope has been laid. Hey, Back to you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's nice. Amen. Beautiful. Well, we thank God for the wonderful service tonight. We thank God for the word and our wonderful pastor and all those who participated. Um, at this time, we are going to have a closing prayer. Would anyone like to volunteer to close us out? I'll be happy to uh, volunteer. Thank you. Most heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for just being God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our great Jehovah, the one and only, our King of kings, our Lord of lords. Lord, we thank you on tonight 
for uh, the word that has gone forth. Lord, we thank you that you have given us another piece of you, Lord Jesus. Lord, help us to hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against thee, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask that you take us through, Lord Jesus, our daily uh, and weekly tasks and bring us back at the appointed time. And Lord, help us to be mindful of each other and pray for one another and love on one another. I'm not talking about just a uh, pure love, but I'm talking about agape love. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory and the honor for all that you do in our life. And we say amen and amen. And amen. We have one comment in the chat, by the way, from a Sherman, and he validated that sheep will not drink from running water. It has oh, really? to be still. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Sherman.